Mike Schmitz of ESPN. We're here with Jalen Smith, a big man out of Maryland, potential lottery pick in this year's draft. Jalen, appreciate you taking the time, man. Oh, thanks for having me. I think to me it starts with your ability to space the floor, um, and, and not just as a shooter, but also you know as a lob threat, also kind of like a vertical spacer. You know, you don't see that many bigs who can kind of do both. And you can see here, you know, against Ohio State, I mean, that's NBA range. You shoot it really, really easy. When you're shooting the ball well at a high level, what are some of the things that you're doing? I mean, that's just that just helps my team a lot more because. A lot of the bigs in our league had um, like space eaters, so they would stay back a lot and then be able to cut off our guards from driving. So with me picking and popping and hitting a lot more threes, it opened up a lot more lanes for my teammates to drive. Yeah, and like I said, there you can see, you know, you, you have great balance, you have great touch and really consistent mechanics. And so you can space as a shooter, but then you can also space it as a lob threat as well. You know, being a guy who can give your guards, you know, that target up near the rim. And then also you can play some of that four spot uh, and being a guy who can kind of play out of these quick slips or, or ghost screens, wh what are you trying to accomplish here? In our league, um, a slip screen was the hardest to guard because we had a lot of solid bigs in our league, so they weren't able to quickly move their feet because normally in our league, it's taught to hedge because we have a lot of fast guards. So when Coach Thursday told me to start slipping a lot more screens and get a lot more easy open threes, and plus, if they stay back, then I'm going to be wide open for an extra kick. Yeah, perfect. And against a guy like Xavier Tillman, you know, defensive player of the year, uh, even so, you know, you're, you're really fleet of foot and, and you're quick getting out to the three point line and knocking that down. And then because you're a threat in those situations, they got to run you off, too. So we'll get into that. But here's where I think the, the comparison to Jaron makes some sense is just because if you not the same situation, but he's a guy who gets his feet set really quickly. Um, you know, they use him out of a variety of different actions. Have you studied him much? Uh, yeah. Um my first year, that's when people started to compare me a lot to him and told me that I need to watch a lot of his games. So. Yeah, and again, I think a really, really good model for you to watch. And then, okay, because you're such a threat in these situations, right, then what do they have to do? Uh, pretty much now they have to close out on this. Like, since I'm having such a thin frame, I'm a lot quicker than most heavy set big, so I'm able to get past them off the first dribble to get an easy bucket for myself. And, and there you can see just how long your strides are, right? I mean, look where you take this dribble pretty much at the three-point line and then just want two big steps and you're at the rim. Um, so I, I think that's a big reason why you're so tough to guard. And again, Jaron, just talking about that stride length, not the same situation, but uh, w what do you think of this? Uh, pretty much like you said, a lot of heavy set bigs like Nurkic are um, not able to quickly move their feet against a better big like himself. And plus, they know he can shoot the ball, so they got to either decide to, to guard his shot or guard the drive. Yep, exactly. And I think that's what's going to make you, you know, so dynamic at the next level. And then you're also a guy who can space it to the corners and kind of play, you know, that four spot. Where do you see yourself positionally at the next level? Uh, pretty much I, between the four and five, but as like a stretch four and five, being able to step out and not be that dominant post type big like most bigs are in the league and just being able to open up the lane for a lot of quicker guards in the league. Yeah, I think you're a guy who could probably start at the four and then slide up to the five in some smaller lineups or, or vice versa even. And a lot of that is because you can play out of those corners like that. Um, and then, you know, that's something you'll see from Miles Turner too. Like I said, I think you're a little more agile than he is, um, but he's able to play with uh, Domanta Sabonis because he can shoot the ball, right? And then you can also shoot it out of a variety of different actions too. And just the footwork here, I mean, you look like a wing shooting the ball like that. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean... <laughs> That, that's when it feels good, right? Yeah, most definitely. Uh, so I, that's why I think makes you so interesting is like a Jaron. I mean, look at this. I don't know if you remember this play. The, the shot looks a little interesting, but he, he's a guy that they could run off screens like this. What, what do you think of this to tie oh, yeah, it? Much, yeah, that's, I mean, that's great footing, especially in being a lot, of, a lot of body control and just being able to shoot over a defender just standing right there. Yep, and, and, and again, so I think you're a guy who's not just a standstill guy and then also can put it down a little bit. Um, one of the areas I think you, you've made one of the biggest strides, we talked about the shooting, but also you know, being able to play make and, and kind of find teammates. How much of an emphasis was that for you between your freshman and sophomore season? And, and how much, I guess, did playing more like as a five at times as opposed to you know, more of a four next to Bruno kind of change uh, you know, the openness of the floor that you had this year? Uh, it changed a lot more. I mean, Bruno was pretty much that – Everybody knew he was in the paint at all times, so yep. it was really much harder to move around. Yeah, and I think you're going to be playing, like we talked about earlier, out of these pick and pops a lot, right? So you're going to have to make a decision either against a rotating guard or wing or just a stunt. Um, what do you see here and anything you would have done differently? Um, I would have kicked it to um, Daryl in the corner off without hesitation that time. 
because I felt as though that holding the ball just slowed it down and just forced a turnover at the end that was unnecessary. Yeah, so just a quick swing, right? And and, yeah. and we've seen you do that before. We're going to see that on this next clip here. I think this is what you're going to look like in the NBA, right? Being that kind of pressure release and then just a quick one more, right? Yes, sir. And, and so that's, again, I think you absolutely have that in your game. And then one guy I like to watch, it's not a pick and pop situation, but uh, who I think is really cerebral, and he's a little bit later in his career now, but Al Horford, very, very underrated player who's had a long, long successful career. And I think you can look like this too, right? So if you're playing out of that corner, Montrez is going to run you off and then just being able to make these basic reads, right? Mm -hmm. and, and then, so it's you, you see it in these pick and pops, you see it you know, playing as a spacer, and then also I think one of the next steps is kind of in these short roll type situations. Uh, what do you see here? Pretty much that kick to the corner already without the dribble, uh, just for an easy three, but with that dribble I just collapse the lane for myself and for my teammates. No, yeah, it's a good point, and I think uh, on one hand, again, like you're explosive, you could get to the free throw line here, you could finish that easily. Um, but just kind of showing through, you know, some of the some of the progression that NBA guys will go through. Like here's Horford, very similar situation, right? What stands out about this? Uh, he got it. he didn't even look um, towards the basket; he just saw an open player for an immediate three. Yep, and you're kind of that second point guard in these situations, right? You're the guy making that next decision, um, and I think that's where your, you know, your IQ and your feel for the game is going to continue to stand out. Uh, and, and you clearly have that because you can make plays like this. What do you remember about this? Uh, pretty much, I wasn't originally going to pass that, but I was so off balance when I saw it, and then I just saw Dante as the first person, so I just kicked it out before I could get a travel call on myself. Yeah, it's a great read, and, and I think that just shows to be able to make that, not just to see it, but to deliver it, you know, with one hand on the move like that is pretty high level. So, um, again, I think you have the framework to be really good in, the, in those type of situations. And then, all right, so we talked about pick and pop into space. The next level read of that is kind of playing out of these handoffs, right? How comfortable are you in these situations? During college, I wasn't as comfortable with it because I wasn't able to dribble as much. But uh, coming into the, um, this offseason that we have right now, I've been doing that a lot more with the guards I've been playing with and just being more confident with my dribble and being able to make that quick read. Yeah, for sure. And and this, you know, you, you were really good, I thought, making these kind of uh, automatic backdoor reads. What, what is this just a read by you, you you and your teammate just kind of collabing? Uh, actually, actually, that was a play for us uh, um, after a while because they was closer to realize that everybody was jumping the handoffs between me and Ant. So he decided, like, if they're going to cheat it, why not make a play off of it? And then he started to send Ant back door for me to make that bounce pass. Got you. Yeah, it's a great pass. Great read. And so I think you're a guy who can really have success. And then again, Horford, not the exact, exact same situation, but he, he's a guy who can even bring the ball up and then just kind of guys cutting off of him, you know, whether it's playing out of splits or, or handoffs, you know, he's really good in those type of situations. Uh, and then I, again, like I said, I think you're a guy who can either facilitate or, you know, be kind of a roller in these type of situations. Uh, take me through this play. Originally, I was just going to attack him off the dribble because I, I didn't see the, um, the person that was going at first. But then they, they caught it up, so I decided just to go into a quick handoff to make it easier for myself because I knew that they weren't going to be able to get around it that quick enough. And then he saw me, and pretty much at the end, it was just all about body control because at first I was trying to dunk it, but then his body tore kind of messed it up for me. So, all right, we, we've seen you be able to, you know, space the floor. Uh, you're a guy who can dive as a lob threat. You can run the floor. Um, playing out of these handoffs, I think you've gotten more comfortable. And then playing out of the mid post, too, like – Maybe a team isn't going to feature you in, in that sense, but here you got Kofi Cockburn on you a little bit slower, right? Show him the ball, and then just easy rise and fire. Um, yeah. So I think that's a good you know framework for, for your attack in the mid post. And then not the same situation, but Miles really comfortable in these situations as well. Uh, and then, so because you're a threat to shoot it, then what can you do? Uh, pretty much it depends. Like With that, a lot of people start to close up and clog me and start trying to press me up a lot more. And with that being a little bigger, I can be able to bend down quicker and get off, get into the lane quicker than most base can move their feet. Yeah, exactly. Like, you, look, he's right up in you, taking your airspace, afraid of that jump shot, and then you can get downhill to your left hand really, really good with your left hand. Um, and Jaron is a guy who, again, very comfortable with his left, almost prefers it, uh, and, and pretty similar play there. Why are you so comfortable with your left? Um, I, To be honest with you, I don't know. Ever since I've been growing up, like, it's odd, like my left hand's my dominant hand. Well, not my dominant hand, but like my stronger hand. Okay. And my, my right hand's my weaker hand, even though it's my dominant hand. So like the ball always gravitated towards my left. So that's just something I just always had. You write with your right and all that though? Yeah, everything else is with my right. It's just like the left hand's like, it's the dominant dribbling hand also. Yeah, well that makes you more tough to guard, for sure. But I think when you do establish position, like you see on this next play, 
then like you said earlier, you're really comfortable over either shoulder, right shoulder, left shoulder, doesn't matter, really patient. And what are you trying to do with your foot here? Are you trying to wrap that foot out around his? Uh, yeah, pretty much. That's, that's just something I learned from Bruno. Uh, he always did that to me in practice, and I can never guard it. And he always – it basically was like a hook but with your leg. So and I just decided to add it to myself, and, and it worked out a lot on most bigs in our league. Yeah, that's great. Uh, really, really good footwork, and then being able to get to that, you know, left shoulder jump hook. So big time move. And then again, Miles, you know, really good, just getting to that left shoulder as well. Soft touch over Kelly Olenek. So I think that's where you know you guys have some similarities. Can score it from the perimeter and uh, on the block. And then the last piece of the puzzle, offensively, uh, is just being a beast on the offensive glass, right? Um, mm -hmm. Do you think that's an area you can add value right away? Oh yeah, most definitely. Uh, pretty much ever since I've been growing up. Coach told me just try to grab everything that come off the backboard, and most people don't really like. They always, I don't. They have box outs on me like a week, so I always be able to get around them real quickly, and just try to get it off the rebound like that. So, I mean, most people don't realize the strength that I have to get the rebound, so they just take it like as, as it's like a day off. Yeah, yeah, and and you'll see exactly that here, right? You kind of shed the big with the uh, you know little mini swim move. Get to, the, get to the offensive glass and, and grab the ball, put it back. And I love this, though. This is what coaches love, you know, being a guy who generates those extra possessions and is down to do the dirty work. And then uh, very similar here, right? In traffic, just going to go get it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how I caught that one, but hey, uh, that's the one for the step. But... <laughs> Legs flying everywhere, hit the deck. Uh, but I love it, man. That's the type of energy I think you know, teams love. So um, offensively, like I said, I think you're a guy who can space it. You can be a roller. Uh, you can play out of these handoffs. And then also, you know, mid post offensive glass uh, can really, really have an impact. Uh, how about on the defensive end of the floor? What, how do you think you fit in there? Well, that's a work in progress. Like obviously in my freshman year, I wasn't able to switch out on a lot more guards than it was. So we had to stick like certain defensive principles. But uh, coming into my sophomore year, uh, since we basically was like a small ball when we had to file, I was able to switch out a lot more guards and the guards was able to pick up the bigs that I was guarding. So yeah, you mentioned it, you know, stepping out, switching ball screens, something you did a lot more of uh, this second year and, and you've had some really impressive possessions against like, you know, a guard like Cassius Winston. And uh, I think people initially saw like, you know, just the way you ran and moved at times and wondered, okay, is he a guy who can really step out and, and guard the perimeter? But I think you showed that, you know, over the course of the season. This was, I thought, one of your most impressive perimeter defense possessions. And I showed this to Cassius, too, when we did this. Uh, what stands out about this? What are you trying to accomplish here? Uh, pretty much the main thing was just trying to keep him out of the paint. And, I mean, obviously I was hand-checking him a lot, and the rest wasn't really calling this. So, I mean, he got I got away with a couple fouls. But uh, like I said, the main goal was just to try to keep him out of the paint and not let him get any easy passes because I was guarding the guard and the, uh, the guards was guarding the big. So I didn't want to make no this no matchups that they put in that guard. And, and that's something you probably wouldn't have gotten away with your freshman year, right? You got you got called for a lot of those hand checks. Yeah, a lot of them. Um, I mean, obviously uh, coming into the league and with a target basically on me uh, all freshmen. Uh, so refs trying to intimidate you. But this year they, they decided to be on my side. Yeah, and I think, that, you know, again, like I said, this is a really, really impressive play. Just at least giving yourself enough space to keep him in front. You know, he's a guy who can beat you as a shooter and can also beat you in the paint. So really, really good job staying down, using your length, and then getting the defensive rebound. And Jaron is one of the better switch defenders, you know, in the NBA, really, here against C.J. McCollum. Um, what do you like about this? Uh, pretty much, like, uh, pretty much, obviously, you know, um, C.J. McCollum is a great shooter, so he always kept his hand up on his shot and being able to play the drive and the shot, and then being able to get his hand on, on the ball on the drive, it's, it's an impressive thing as a big. Yeah, for sure. No, you said it like right here, he's got the high hand, and then he says, okay, I'm going to put you on your left hand, make you uncomfortable, I'm going to get a piece of it, and then I'm going to challenge your shot in the paint um, you know, with the left, which you do a lot. So really, really good, and I think you're going to be in those situations as well. Um, you know, there were some times when maybe they got, they got a, a step on you. Uh, anything you would have done differently here? Uh, pretty much, I, I would gave myself more space. I believe that once he came came towards me, normally I would back up, but I just said, and this time I didn't. So that kind of gave me the disadvantage with his quick speed. Yeah, I think that's that's a good point because if you look at the shot clock, right, five, four, three, two, one. If you can just gap him, keep him in front, and then contest, you know, then he's not going to be able to get a piece of the paint. And that's what you'll see from these bigs. Again, Ish Smith, not much of a shooter, right? So going to gap him, keep him in front, and, and contest. 
like you said, I think you are a guy who can step out and, and switch. And as you continue to learn the tendencies of players, understanding, okay, I got to gap this guy or I got to really pressure this guy, um, you know, you're going to have a lot of success in those situations. All right, so in more traditional pick and roll situations, whether it's a drop or a weak or a hedge or an ice, what, what take me through this play here. This is earlier in the season. Mm-hmm. Um, pretty much like that whole emphasis was on um, just – well, we knew, um, what's his name, Marcus Howard was a great guard and he could pretty much go off any second. So it was trying to pretty much ice the screen. Well, not ice, well, drop it and make him just stop towards me and let Ant get back, but I let him get around me. So it wasn't enough time for Ant to get back. So, yeah, it seems like initially you thought, okay, maybe he's going to force him right, but then he gets to his left. And then just, yeah, keeping your head in line with the ball, right, going to allow you to kind of keep that in front, corral, and force them into a mid-range jumper. But the number one priority is stopping the ball. And even when they do get a little bit of an edge, you got the length, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so just pretty much like play all shots, no matter what, even if you get beat. That was, that's just the main emphasis is just to play the shot. Yeah, 100%. And even if they do turn the corner, you're a guy who can erase that really, really quickly. And just to show some of the differences, right, when you're really good – um, and, and when you probably have some areas to improve. So here, I would just say, like, what, what do you think of your stance? Uh, pretty much trying to get lower and keep my hands up. Uh, that was one of the things I struggled with, just keeping my hands up on defense. And that's what, like, got me a lot of those quick fouls. But uh, that's just something I've been working on, just making sure I just keep my hand up and try to, even if they're like that type of class, I could have been able to deflect it if I wanted to. But. I just didn't have my hands up. Yeah, 100%. If you're sitting down, using that length, taking away those pocket passes, really squaring up Cassius, then he's not going to feel comfortable even making that pass. And nothing comes of it, uh, but just a little thing. Whereas this is what you can look like, right? Mm-hmm. Really engaged, locked in, moving your feet, and then he's got to give it up, right? Yeah, what's that? So I think that's, I mean, that's perfect defense. And then the toughest part about the adjustments to the NBA and these drops is having to play both, right? Mm-hmm. Having to play like the guard, but also play the big. Um how, how do you kind of find that balance, right? Like anything you would have done differently here? I mean, it's, it's just a matter of reading the guard at that point because mm-hmm. you don't know, like, on a guard like Westbrook, you don't want to stop him too high because he can explode past you. And then on a guard like, uh, let's say, a shooter like Chris Paul, you don't want to stop him too short because he can float it over you. So it just, it's just a matter of reading the guard at that point. Yeah, 100%. And you're going to be playing this cat and mouse game a lot, right? Where you got to kind of bluff or cover, um, make, you know, make them make a decision they don't want to. And I think that's going to be easier if you're probably a little lower and, and you're able to, you know, be at the level of the big, right? And I know you're trying to get tag help there. Um, but, you know, having those active hands and being able to take these away, you know, is, is what you'll see from a lot of the best bigs, right? So watch like uh, Al Horford. And I know it's a different situation, right? Um, mm-hmm. But he's able to, to play two. Yeah, exactly. And, and he's not the most athletic guy. He's not the longest guy, but he's just really smart, and he's a vet. And you'll see it even again here against R.J. Barrett. Two-on-one situation, just active mm-hmm. hands, right? Well, that, yeah, just pretty much just keeping them, making sure, like you said, keeping those hands active and making sure that you're able to play all reads. Yep, exactly. And I think you'll be able to do that as well. Like here, I thought this was really good, taking that away, you know? And so, like I said, I think you're a guy who can, you know, step out and, and guard the perimeter. Um, and you've, you know, made great strides as a pick and roll defender as well. And where I was really impressed was just with how much you battle in these one-on-one situations. Uh, what do you remember about the, the, this game against Caleb Wesson? Uh, pretty much, well, after the game, I was, I was completely drained. And I, I was slept, slept for like the, the whole next day, I believe. <laughs> but um, just going into the game, I mean, obviously I knew he was a banger and he was going to be in the post a lot, so I knew it was going to be a challenge because Bruno took it last year. But uh, pretty much my main goal was just try to stand between him and the basket and make him shoot over my hands, and that was just my whole emphasis for that game. Yeah, and here I, I was just like, th- this is real fight. Okay, maybe he's stronger, but um, you're not giving up on any of these players. And take me through this. Uh, yeah, pretty much uh, like once he moved over, he got, he got like the first position on me. Yep. So I was just trying to battle back and try to fight him off the post no matter what and then with the guys coming over helping me it was like three pants he had to shoot over yeah and there's your length you know not giving up on the play I think a lot of guys would have just taken the L once he ducks in on you there and just kind of gotten buried Um, but you're fighting you're fighting and even though you know you are a little more wiry like I said I think you're a lot tougher than than people think here you can just see your length Uh, give me that I love that (laughs) what do you remember about that he likes to bang huh he was going at you Oh yeah, I mean, after a while, I mean, he was he was talking to me a lot during that game, and but I wasn't, I don't really pay attention to trash talk, so it don't really affect me. But I mean, like I said, I was guard, switching between him and Kofi the whole game, so I mean, I was into it. And then you've also shown some success against kind of these three fours too, Lamar Stevens. What what does he like to do? Um, 
with Lamar, it was he was the toughest guard in the big on Big Ten, I'll say, because he was a he was a big and a guard, so I mean he could bang with you and be able to like make a quick move off you. So pretty much it's either like you just gotta be able to play up on him and not give him much space to do anything. Yeah, no, he's really good. I think he's a sleeper actually, just because he's physical. He's playing that three four spot, tough tough position to find. Uh, but you do a really good job of like giving yourself enough space to where he's not just gonna rip by you going right, and then also being able to contest with you know with that left hand. That's really really good defense. All right, that's you kind of on the perimeter. That's you on the block. Uh, but you are a really really good shot blocker. What take me through the technique of this? Uh, pretty much uh, that's something that we always worked on uh, with our strength coach, Coach Kyle, just being vertical. Uh, well, with Kyle, he's a very physical person. So, I mean, that's that's just something that we learned. But just going into this, he told me to make sure that I always keep my hands up because even if you bring them down at one inch, the ref won't call a foul. So, And then it's hard for people, most people to shoot over my hands going to lips because it's, it's, it's um, shot altering. So just keeping those hands up is, is a big thing. Yeah, that's that's picture perfect right there. You're off the floor, even maybe even before he is. Um, you know, staying high with your hands, not coming down, really, really good. And then Jaron, you know, another guy who's really good with verticality. Not the same situation, but um, you can see the length there, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. It's and, like, it's just hard to shoot over there. Yep, and then also, you know, doing the little things, right? Um, saving the ball off a of thon maker, and really, really good. And then again, blocking shots with your left hand. Uh, it, it seems like you're more comfortable blocking shots with your left hand too, right? It's not a more comfortable thing. It's just like it's just a something that I do. Like I don't I don't notice it until like people bring it out. Like normally I would believe that's my right hand, but it's my left. So I mean, it's like it's no it's no favoritism towards my hand blocking shots. It's just the hand that's available at that time. And it's situational, right? I mean, so yeah. if you were to try to block this with your right hand, maybe you would come across his body. Maybe it's a foul. Um, but because you have that timing, that length, that ability to get off the floor quickly. Um, that's great. And then Miles Turner, again, really, really good shot blocker. I think he's uh, just over two block shots per game. Um, so, you know, you're one of these rare guys who can shoot threes and block shots. And, and there's not a lot of them in the NBA, right? No, no, there's not. And I think the last piece of it is the defensive glass. Again, skinny, call him what you want, but you're low, and then you go get the ball, right? Just using your length. Very basic, mm-hmm. simple boxing out technique, but I thought you were really, really good in, the, in those type of situations. And, um, again, every once in a while, maybe a Xavier Tillman will get you, right? Mm-hmm. I, at that point, I just I just boxed out too much at that point because he was able to back up and just get around me. But if, if I would have just stayed there and not moved much, I would have got the rebound. Yeah, and that's that balance. And a lot of times in the NBA – Unless it's like late game playoff, you, you, teams aren't sending as many guys to the offensive glass, right? So if you're yeah. active and smart and you can read it off the rim, um, you know I think you'll be a guy who can grab a ton of a ton of rebounds. And here in general, just to end it, I really like this play um, in semi transition. Okay, you're going to kind of clog and keep Cassius in front. You're going to get back to yours, and then you're going to put a body on him and then go get the defensive rebound. So I think that's that perfect balance between knowing where they are and then you know attacking the defensive glass and, and really making a play. So uh, like I said, man, you're like the perfect fit in today's game um, with just your shooting ability, being able to block shots, uh, your ability to run the floor. And, and the last question here before I let you go, uh, what have you taken from kind of what the NBA has done and really taking a stand against racism, against systemic racism, and I guess how much pride is there for you, you know, as a black athlete entering a league that is trying to be proactive and, and really trying to generate change in, in this country? Uh, this, this is amazing to feel and just knowing that there's people standing for the same um, beliefs that you believe in and making sure that they want to make a difference in society. I mean, like they said, things haven't really changed for since like over 400 years and it's time to make a change for that. It's time for people to be treated equal, not based off your skin, but just based off the content of your character. And just now knowing that people are actually like really realizing what's happening, it's, it's just amazing knowing that people want that change and not just because they see it as a, like a trend in fact. Yeah, for sure. And, and it's been amazing from my perspective to sit back and watch, you know, what, what the league has done. And I think you're going to be a part of that, you know, that next wave of young players uh, who has a great head on his shoulders and is going to come in, you know, not, not just as a great player, but a great young man. So, Jalen, I appreciate the time, man. And uh, best of luck throughout the process. Well, thanks for having me. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.